So today we're doing the second part of your <coughs> field work, your practical. So normally in freshwater ecology, we need to go out in the field, we take a range of samples, we can get some data in the field. You would have taken some physiochemical data and identified some of the plants. But you'll nearly always have to bring samples back to the lab because you simply can't identify all of the biota all the flora, all of the fauna when you're out there. So you'll need to bring samples back, you need to preserve them and keep them, and then we need to set them up onto microscopes, and that's what you're going to do today. So, have you all got your module handbooks or the relevant pages? Have you all got the drawings that we did or that I handed out in the last lecture? Excellent. In that case, you'll have no problem whatsoever. <coughs> Okay, so the main point we're going to look at today, using the equipment. So first off, you've got your phytoplankton samples, that's your algae. And for that, you'll need to use the high-powered microscopes, which are these ones, with the black eyepiece units. Those are your high-powered microscopes. You'll need to have the objectives, so that's the objective lens onto times 40, which is the blue one, and you've got times 10 magnification in the eyepieces. Okay, so you've got 400 magnification needed for your algae. We'll come around and help you set it up, but essentially you need to take one of the um, little microscope slides, if I can see one, and they've got a little dimple in to hold the water. So you need to take a little pipette, Take a very small droplet of water, put it in the dimple, and then put a cover slip on top and put that underneath at times 400. And essentially, you're counting the algae and identifying across your water droplet. So you need to move the, the stage of the microscope along so you can count down across. And you're listing the species you can see and you're counting them. Books are provided, but I've also done some beautiful artwork here of the most common species I found in your samples. So if you can identify things down to species, fantastic. But to be honest, I'll be amazed. I'm not really expecting it. So if you can just aim for the key groups, that would be great. So try and differentiate your chlorophyta, which is your green algae. From your cyanophyta, which are your blue-green algae, uh, from the diatoms, which are the ones with the hard shells. That in itself isn't that easy. But if you can come up with a list that says what proportion of your sample is green, blue-green or diatoms, that would be great. I say if you can get to genus or species, that's even better still. So that's the algae, the phytoplankton. I also suggest that you count 400 cells as a minimum. That sounds like a lot, but sometimes you'll get a colony with a thousand cells in it straight off. You know, so if you get that straight away, just keep going. You can't just count one. So just keep going for sort of half an hour or something. But aim for at least 400 cells. Um, so next we've got the zooplankton, which you also collected. For that, you'll need the dissecting microscopes, which are these ones with the blue eyepieces. Uh, for the zooplankton, take a petri dish or a petri dish lid, it doesn't matter. Shake up your sample, take a, a decent sized droplet, say like a five peas worth, drop it into here, put it underneath and again make a list of what you can see. There's only about four different species of zooplankton so that's a bit easier and again there's books and I shall put on some pictures, which I some easy to use sketches, and I'll put those on the overhead when I've finished, so you've got those to use as well. Um, so again, just look through the water droplet, see what you've got. Aim for 50 individuals. So you might have to do one droplet, then put another droplet in, and then another droplet. Okay? Uh, so that's zero factor. And then the third 
element of the, the biota are your invertebrates. So for invertebrates you've got your big lab bench lenses, so you just plug those on, switch them on, you've got the light, you've got trays, uh, mounted needles, tweezers etc and you've got the identification books uh, to work through. So you're trying to identify those down to the lowest level you can. So try and aim for family um, if possible. Um, so again, you're making a list of the taxa that you find down to the lowest possible level and calculate a proportion. And to aim for at least 25 individuals in total from your samples. So that's all your biology. Uh, remember you're doing this twice because you've got <coughs> two samples, uh, one from one part of the lake, one from the other. In your report you need to say why the biology is different, what might be causing that, how is it different. Think about how you're going to present your data, tables, graphs, can you do in statistics? Okay, that's for you guys to think about in your writing. Uh, the last piece of data we'll collect today is a little bit of chemistry. So we want to look at the nutrient concentrations because that's very important for governing the algae and the zooplankton in particular. There are basic water chemistry testing kits put out on one of the benches. Uh, when you come to use those, please wear some lab gloves because of the solutions in there. So you wear your lab gloves and come to me first and I'll show you how to use the test kits. It's probably best if you do the water chemistry last. So it only takes about five or ten minutes. So <coughs> as a group, you'll need to get on with your microscope work first and then do your chemistry at the end. Okay? So in order to run the practical, you need to be in the same group you're in in the field. You need to collect your own group samples, which are all on the table right at the, the back. Some of the labelling was a bit iffy and it sort of started to come off. So Send somebody along there who wrote the label on who might be able to identify your sample. Uh, then bring your samples back to your desks and <laughs> just start. Uh, we're here, the technicians and lecturers here to help you set up the microscope. So if you're in doubt, ask. Okay? Um, so that's it. Good luck. Where you go? Right arm, close your left eye, look down with your right and focus up to the sharp. Okay, then you close this eye and look down at that one and adjust that up so you get your final addition. There's normally a difference between two eyes, so to get this true steady effect, you need to. So, does that, does that's that only adjustable. do for that lens or does it do it for both? No, that's just for that one. That one you fixed, you, you do right. it with, with your oh, right. and then, in that and then that's right. adjusted for your eyes. Start off with two lines together, both have a gap along this length. Yeah, if you look on the blackboard, it's like the one on the left. Yeah. 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 I've seen this one. Yeah. It's in the middle now, have you? Are you alright? Is that still moving? Wiggle the fine thread. You just see if you can see the big little ruler from your eyes. And then near where the middle of the ruler is, 50. Have you got a lovely sort of bag, an eye shaped bag with a brown centre in it? That's, that's, um, it's not actually on the board because oh no. they're quite unusual. It's um, a dinoflagellate. Okay. Um, so you spell that? Yeah, D I N. Are you like some of the things? Like an egg or something in the middle? Yeah. I thought it was a pound. I've never been fine by the way. They look more like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 so it goes like the way for me. Uh, <laughs> 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 
nice yeah. example of Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> that can photosynthesize. Right. So they're sort of plant like, but they're actually bacteria in the pure sense. There you go. So if we can find that's about 210 times magnification plus the screen magnification. So uh, there's a way of working out. These are small zooplankton, the, the, the sort of animal parts. These are the photospots, the eyes, and the sort of legs at the front, the copepods. You find them in freshwater and seawater, obviously different species. That's a that's a quite a So you can see it's eye or eye like Photo photosensitive okay. spots, isn't it? Yes, that'll be really correct. And those are arms want a better word or what it swims with and what it maintains its position in the water column. And also it's filtering the water towards its mouth but it's eating the algae. Right. Which is smaller than it, so it's all the time it's filtering the water towards itself and ingesting the algae. And in fact, sometimes you can see the guts. You stuff yeah, on I'll one. Yeah, I'll stop on one. I'll just... It's gone a bit thick Wow, there's loads there. Oh, yeah, we've gone. Look, there's um, That's a, a coca pod just there. That's it's another type of... There's, there's a coca pod there, another type of zooplankton. With a... It's got an a, eye. An eye. There's that eye is orange. There we go. Oh, the we ones go. in the ocean are very similar. Right. They were at the bottom of the food chain in the oceans. Um, you need to take your sample, put 25 mils in, two drops, or just like eye drops, just add them to it, then you put the lid on and you just give it a quick shake just a couple of times to make sure it makes it. Then you take one of these and add the pole. And you see it's got a little end, and that's where it snaps. And inside is a vacuum, plus the chemicals that you need to do the test. So you put it into your sample, and you push down on the ample to snap the bottom off. It takes a bit of practice sometimes. And it will draw the sample up into the ample, mix with that, and slowly turn blue. You need to leave it about two or three minutes, and then you can compare it again. And you compare how blue it's gone. Um, the nitrate works in the same way, you just need to follow the instructions, it takes a bit longer, it's a bit more shaky. Right, so I need to do both of those.